Hey, welcome to UK Wildcraft. So we're in early autumn now, which in the forager's calendar is mostly about mushrooms. But there's also plenty of other plants that you can forage. So I'm going to be showing you my top five plants that you can forage in early autumn. So first of all, we have the elder. It's quite a small tree and very uh, common all over the UK. For me, the best way to ID it is by the leaves. And they usually come in sets of five, sometimes seven but five is much more common. Uh, and they come in two sets of opposing leaves and then one terminal leaf. And the uh, leaves are finely serrated. Uh, for me, by far the best use of this tree is the elder flower, which comes in, uh, come out in summer, usually like June, July. Uh, this time of year is about the elder berry. Uh, we're just coming up to the end of the season now, sort of um, September is the last you'll see of the the berries, if you see these are these are past their best, but if you're in early September, these should be fine. By October, they're completely gone. Um, make sure you remove the stalks if you're picking these elderberries. You can take the whole thing home, but then make sure you remove the berries off the stalks because the stalks are actually mildly toxic. They contain a very small amount of cyanide, so yeah, make sure you take them off the stalks. Uh, the berries, you can tell when they're ripe, when they start to, the clusters start to droop down and they come a nice dark red, almost black sort of colour. And there's one other use that you can have for this plant and if you take the leaves, they're not edible, but there's another use for them. If you crunch them up, you get this sort of uh, get a little bit of uh, liquid out of them but the green paste that comes out is actually an insect repellent and if you rub that on your skin you won't smell very nice because it smells horrible but it's a good use for insect repellent one other thing blackberries and elderberries go very well together uh, they're out the same sort of time of year so uh, and they pair very well together nice flavor combination uh, you can make a good syrup out of them and also blackberry and elderberry jam is very nice i'll uh, i'll post a separate video on how to make that. Next up we have the slow which grows on the black fawn bush. Uh, very easy to ID. They have these quite small leaves which are pointed at the end and uh, you can see that they're quite finely toothed, finely serrated on the edges there. Uh, the bark of the branches is almost black and it has all these long nasty thorns running all the way down uh, where, where I guess it's named black thorn from uh, the fruit of the the black thorn there the slows they're they're very like sour very sharp some people like to eat them straight off the bush but I think they're way too sharp uh, but you can make a good jam out of them and obviously slow gin um, everyone knows I like to try and make some of that every year but yeah very very sharp flavor So yeah, that's the slow. They're very common in the UK, um, especially around sort of uh, roadsides and hedgerows and uh, around fields. Another good fruit out this time of year are damsons. Uh, they're a bit bigger than slows, but they're very closely related. Whereas slows are really sharp, these are quite nice and sweet. You can just eat these straight off, straight off the bush. They've got a similar sort of colour to slows. The slows are a bit greener. These have got more of it. They look more like plums. And they're very actually very closely related to plums. The leaves are bigger than slow leaves, black form bush leaves. But they're more oval shaped, not quite as pointed at the end, and they are serrated as well. The branches aren't quite as spiny, not as thorny as you would get on a slow on a slow. And um, the fruit Dams and fruit you can make a really good jam from, and also a liqueur if you mix it with gin or vodka and some sugar, it makes a really good liqueur. Okay, next up we have hazelnuts, which I really like. Uh, for me, really way to easy way to ID the tree. So look at the branches, and they're really nice and long straight branches, and the really thin ones, long straight thin ones, they're called withies, and they're quite flexible used in crafting. Um, so yeah, very common tree, again quite 
a unique sort of looking leaves that you can ID. Uh, the hazelnuts are really best uh, the first two weeks of September um, and you've got to be quite lucky to beat the squirrels. I have got a bit of a trick to be able to find them actually because if you get in hazels on the edges of woods where there's loads of squirrels then you won't beat the squirrels to them, they'll eat them while they're still green. But if you find one a tree like this which is kind of on its own on the edge of a field, there's houses nearby so the squirrels are kind of too scared to come and get the nuts here and you'll find them see the nuts like this they'll come in these little husks and as long as they're nice and brown they should be right they just take them off so yeah, that's the hazelnuts there and you can just take them out of the husk and yeah that's a hazelnut um, and you just take those home put them on your windowsill for a couple of weeks just to uh, finish ripening and then just crack them with a, a nutcracker and then roast them. As you're going to eat them, just roast them, serve them with a bit of chocolate, or you can add them to your muesli, they're really nice. Um, so yeah, you can pick them earlier if you want to beat the squirrels, maybe like um, a month before they're ripe. But uh, for me, it's best to just try and find a tree like this one, where you can beat the squirrels to them. This is the dog rose, or Rosa canina. You can tell by these long arching stems. And they are covered in thorns, which are very sharp. The leaves are quite small. They're oval and pointed, and finely serrated. Uh, what we're after is the, the rose hips and um, you can't just eat these off the plant because they are they're basically seed casings and inside they've got seeds which have a which have very fine hairs on and they're an irritant and you can't you can't eat those so what i'll do is collect a load of these off take them home and uh and process them they're good for making uh syrup rose hip syrup it was uh, apparently uh, used a lot during the war when there wasn't enough fruit going around so people used to come and pick these because they are they're very abundant especially in sort of uh, wastelands like this and uh sort of roadsides and uh forest uh wood edges so um you don't have to like cut these off these rose hips what you can do if you sort of bend them at 90 degrees they should just come straight off just like this Uh, you need to collect quite a lot of them if you're going to make a uh, make a syrup. So I'm going to collect these and take them home. So what you want to do is get your rose hip and just cut it in half lengthways. Like that. So you get two halves like that. And then you just want to scrape out the seeds. You see the seeds in there? So you see I've uh, scraped out all the seeds there yeah, and you want to make sure that there's no hairs left in there, they're really fine little hairs because they are an irritant and they're actually really itchy so you want to be careful when you get rid of them. So once you're, once you're happy that all the hairs and the seeds are out, you can give them a quick rinse if you want but you can just eat it like that or um, you can like, add them into salads or um, Obviously, the most what people mostly use them for is for making rose hip syrup. Next up, we have the hawthorn, which is a very common shrub in the UK. Uh, you'll find it growing in woodland edges and around fields like this one. Um, farmers often use them as uh, dividers between fields because they've got quite sharp thorns on them, so it's good to keep animals in or out. Uh, the leaves are quite distinctive. They've got these deep lobes on them. Um, you can eat the leaves. Um, they're a bit bitter at this age, but in early spring, just as they're starting to bud, um, they're not very tasty, but they're quite high in nutrients. Um, also, we've got these sharp thorns on them. You can ID by those. 
Uh, but the main thing we're going after is the haws, these right dark red berries here. Um, you'll see them everywhere this time of year, like September. Um, kind of like a texture of avocado. It's got a very big stone in the middle. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos on foraging, bushcraft and wild food cooking. See you next time.